Oh, he had the. Sorry, we are at no. I don't know, let me see if I didn't touch anything. <laughs> Can't even answer because there's nobody showing, and that's why I said wait. But go ahead, yeah. As we used to always say on television, we are experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> Please stand by. We'll post everything we can on YouTube after this. We're having some. Today, of all days, we're having some internet issues, and hopefully everything is going okay right now. Uh, so we will continue with the gospel, and we apologize. Things are beyond our control sometimes. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We're now going to take a minute and have a children's message. So, pretend you're joining me up here. So here is what some of you may have already gotten this morning, an Easter basket. At my house, we don't get them until after church on Easter. That's just kind of the tradition in my family, I guess. Um, but what do you usually find in your Easter baskets? You know, one of the things, I mean, big chocolate bunny sometimes, but usually lots of little plastic eggs. You know, they're, in the first Easter, they probably didn't have a bunch of, well, you know, Easter eggs. Come on, they didn't know it was Easter yet. But you know, they were looking for something. Let's see if in these eggs we can maybe think about what they were looking for. Let's see what was in... Let's see if this is it. So do you think the women at the tomb were looking for and were happy that they found a little chocolate egg? I don't think so. I don't think that was it. I don't know if chocolate had been invented yet. That's pretty sad, isn't it? That'd be pretty cool. Or... Um, Let's see. Ooh, what's in? Here's a dinosaur egg. Oh, another chocolate egg. No, we already talked about it. They're, that's not what they were looking for. Let's see what was in this one. Ooh. Do you think that they were happy that somebody put a five? They found a five dollar bill. Well, they didn't have five dollar bills then either. I mean, if they found a Roman coin, they might have been, oh great, we can help people. You know, give some money to the poor if he's hungry with that. But. That's probably not what got them all excited. What about this one? Oh, man, this one's a dud. It's empty. What would you feel like if you wound up with an empty Easter egg in your basket? I wouldn't be too happy. I would have thought that either the Easter bunny maybe had forgotten to put something in there, or maybe my brother or sister had gotten in my Easter basket and stolen a piece of candy. I don't know. They wouldn't do that to me. But it's empty. They can't be happy about that, can they? But they were. They were happy and excited. Because when the women went to the tomb and they expected to find something there, just like you expect to find something every time you open an Easter egg or when you get your Easter basket, it was empty. Found out 
from the angel that Jesus had risen. And they ran and told all the disciples the good news. That was the great news on the first Easter. But when they went to look for something, when they went to look for Jesus, he wasn't there. But they found him later and realized he had risen for you, for them, for me, for all people, because God loves us that much. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you love us. And we thank you that even though the women who went to the tomb were looking for something that first Easter morning, the amazing thing is that they found nothing. They found an empty tomb. And then you found them and showed them that you had risen. Thank you for loving us enough to die and to be raised for us so that we might live forever. And all God's children said, Amen. Well, I hope we have everybody back now. Like we said, sometimes technology doesn't work out too well, and we really wanted to do this service live, so we had a couple of a couple of glitches, but I think we're back. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So that first Easter, in some ways, kind of reminds me of today. The disciples were in fear for their lives. They were stuck there in one place, all gathered together. They were afraid maybe if they wandered out, that the same people who arrested Jesus might arrest them and have them killed as well, or at least in prison. And stuck in that room, they wouldn't know the Easter message, except for a couple of bold women who went to do the things that they would always do for their loved ones who had died. They went to the tomb to take care of the body. And they ran into Jesus. They ran into the angel first, of course, as we read, and then they ran into Jesus. They were so amazed that he had risen and then ran back to tell the disciples who Otherwise, might not have known. I still think, and we'll tell that story next week, that he still would have shown up to see them later on that evening. But the first people who shared the good news were the women who had gone to the tomb. Today, we're stuck in our places. And we're stuck there somewhat out of fear because we know, even though that Jesus tells us not to be afraid, he also asks us to to be smart. And we know that going out in public and getting too close to people a lot is not a safe thing right now. So we are trying to be smart. We have some fear. But we're also gathered together out of love. Just like those disciples were gathered together out of love for each other and love for Jesus. They didn't scatter. They still stuck together in a tough time. And you're with your loved ones gathering together in love to protect and take care of each other. And whenever we go out to even try to take care of each other, getting the things we need, yes, it is a little risky, but we're trying to do what we can to show love to the people that we care about. And honestly, I can't put it any other way, but in many ways, this Easter really stinks. Not just because we've had technical difficulties with the camera, but there's a lot that I really miss today. I miss getting to church early on Easter Sunday and sneaking into the kitchen where usually uh, Renee and Tom and Perry and Joel are cooking Easter breakfast for everyone. And they usually, you know, let me have a piece of sausage before the early service so I can have something in my stomach. And then we all join together for breakfast after the first service and you see everybody dressed in their best clothes and so happy to see each other and sharing happy Easter's and Christ is risen with each other. I miss that today. I miss some of the things that, I don't know, maybe seem a little silly 
when I'm talking with the kids during the children's sermon about maybe what they had already gotten in their Easter basket, or a laugh we get every year from, from three young women in our congregation who were in high school when I first got here, who used to always have this competition as to who was wearing the tallest high heels. We still ask them about that. They said they don't do it anymore, but they humor us with it. It's silly, but I miss the joy and laughter of that. I miss watching our children in this congregation going up to the cross that we have just outside our front door during Holy Week and decorating it with flowers. And then almost every family in the congregation gets their picture taken in front of that cross. And it's one of the annual pictures that our family usually takes together. We're not always that big on having all four of us in the picture together, but that's one we cherish every single year. I miss saying Happy Easter to every person as either they're coming in on Sunday morning or as I'm shaking their hand as they're leaving the service. And it's usually a few more than we usually see on the week. But you know what? I miss even the people that I only see a couple times a year because they know that Easter is so important that they make sure that they're here and they celebrate with us. And there's just a certain energy that comes. And I'm like usually super pumped. And you can tell that it's really hard to do that today. I miss sharing the good news with all of you in person. And there's another silly thing that I kind of miss that most of you don't know about. Usually, well, just about every year after worship here, we go to a particular place for our Easter dinner. And as I'm going through the line getting my food, there's a gentleman who is always at the carving station. And he knows who I am, even though we don't necessarily know each other by name. He sees me in my suit with a, and a collar on, and he asks me every Easter Sunday, what did you preach about today? Did you tell him that he was risen? And so I try to give him a little two-minute synopsis of the sermon so that I don't have too many people getting upset behind me as they're waiting for their food. But you know what? That's one of my favorite parts of Easter Sunday. That person who can't be in church because of his job, and he still asks me every single year to share the good news with him. I miss people. I really miss people. And I really miss you. I know that you're here in some way, but I miss you. And I hope you miss each other. But you know, even though this Easter, we might think, that eh, kind of stinks, it doesn't. One of the things that, you know, I like it when people I don't expect point things out to me. Last Sunday, as I was doing one of my usual Sunday traditions, picking up my Sunday morning breakfast at McDonald's, I was talking to a guy in the drive through window who kind of looked a little down, just asked how he was doing through all of this. And he said, well, it's been a crazy week, and I need more coffee. I said, it's been strange for me today, too. And I have to preach to a camera. I'm not used to preaching to a camera. But he looked me in the eye and said, yes, but you still get to preach. We still get to celebrate. We still get to share the good news that today Jesus rose for us that we might be forgiven, so that we may know life and love and eternal life. And maybe the churches across the world are empty. I kind of, I hope that they are because, you know, today an empty church is a sign of our love for each other. The churches across the world may be empty, but more important than that, today we remember that the tomb is empty as well. And Jesus still comes to us in our quarantine world, quarantine world. Jesus still showers us with love and mercy and peace and forgiveness. And whether you're, you know, holed up in your house and you're worried about getting out, you know, it's scary making sure that you are six feet apart from everybody when you do venture out, or no matter where you are, Christ is still there among you. Christ has still risen today. And we can still celebrate. I made myself a little promise today because I'm so used to saying Happy Easter to so many people on Easter Sunday that I miss that. 
And so as I got up this morning, I said, I am going to say Christ is risen or Happy Easter to everybody that I can. Everybody that I actually see and could hear me. So first is, of course, to Jody when we woke up, I said Happy Easter. Then as I'm pulling out of my subdivision, one of my neighbors who happens to uh, be the music minister at another church in town, I saw him at a stop sign, kind of screamed at him, he rolled out his window, and we had said Christ is risen back and forth to each other. Right before I pulled into the church, somebody was jogging down one of the sidewalks. I probably scared the Jesus, I'm going to say into them maybe, instead of out of them today. And I just screamed out, Christ is risen. I did see a little smile, so that was good. As I was getting here early to kind of prepare myself, and I saw a police car, not checking to see how many people we had here, but the police often kind of hang out in our parking lot waiting for calls. I walked out to talk to this police officer and told her, Happy Easter, and she said it back to me. And it's different than it usually is on Easter Sunday. But I still felt myself getting the same kind of joy that I do when this place is filled with a couple of hundred people. You might not be, obviously, you aren't with your church family today, except for through the miracle of the internet. So you too can still share that good news. You know, those 12 plus, well, 11, plus a few others that were there with them in the upper room didn't just stay in that upper room. At some point, they got out and they shared the good news to the ends of the earth as they knew it. And we will, at some point, be able to get out of our quarantine homes and hopefully life will be a, a different normal, but it'll get closer to normal. And we can still share that good news with everyone because people need to hear it. But today I'm gonna ask you a special favor. You would be saying Happy Easter and hugging and shaking hands and all that today if you were here and it were a regular Easter Sunday. But today, I would like every single one of you who are listening to this, watching this, to call, not just text, not just email, but call at least one person. And it doesn't have to be a person you normally see on Easter Sunday. And tell them that Christ is risen and that God loves them. We can still share the good news. And maybe in the middle of all of this chaos and you know, quarantine that we're in, we might begin to realize how much we need to continue to do that. Or we might realize what we've been taking for granted. We have this incredible gift today that we celebrate, that Christ died and rose for each and every one of us. And our call is to share it with everyone we meet, with everyone we know, so that the world may know God's love. So, feel free in your comments later on to actually tell us if you did this. You don't have to. But humor, humor a pastor and do something like that today. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed for you, for me, for your neighbor, for the person across the street, for the person across the state, for the person across the world. Our sermon hymn is a little bit different this year. If you were to look at it, you'd say, what is pastor thinking? We've never sung this thing before. We're supposed to sing the hymns we always know on Easter. Au contraire, you know the tune, you're fine there. But just because you might get caught up in singing it, I'd like to spend just a couple minutes reading the words of it to you. Uh, it's an old tune we know, it's the tune of the church, the tune is the church's one foundation. You know that with your eyes closed, but you need to open your eyes to actually sing these words. The words were put together by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette, a gifted musician who has the ability to put new words to tunes that we know to talk about things that are, are going on in the world and often to um, describe what the scripture reading is for that day. And Carolyn specifically wrote this hymn for this Easter. I'll read through the verses for you. And then we'll pray and then we'll sing it. 
This Easter celebration is not like ones we've known. We pray in isolation. We sing the hymns alone. We're distant from our neighbors, from worship leaders too. No flowers grace the chancel to set a festive mood. We do have a few flowers. No gathered choirs are singing, no banners lead the way, O oh God of love and promise. Where is joy this Easter day? The sanctuary is empty. May homes become the place we ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. Our joy won't come from worship that's in a crowded room, but from the news of women who saw the empty tomb. Our joy comes from disciples who ran with haste to see, who heard that Christ has risen, and then by grace believed. In all the grief and suffering, may we remember well, Christ suffered crucifixion and faced the powers of hell. Each Easter bears the promise, Christ rose that glorious day, now nothing in creation can keep your love away. We thank you that on Easter your church is blessed to be a scattered, faithful body that's doing ministry. In homes and in the places of health and healing too, we live the Easter message by gladly serving you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, this Easter is different. We're not gathering together in the same way, and yet the message is the same. You love us more than we can ever imagine to the point that you were willing to die and rise for the sake of our lives that we may know love that we may know forgiveness, that we may know eternal life. Help us to continue to spread that good news, however we might be able to do it. Through words across the internet, through words across cellular lines, however we can continue to share your good news of grace. Help us this day and always to share that Easter message. The world may know your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
confess our faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. All creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. We continue to pray for those who help keep and bring peace to this world. Those who are on the front lines of the pandemic, those who Serve in our armed forces, Cody, Kathy, Devin, Sam, Dallas, Samuel, Blake, Alex, Chris, Eddie, or police officers, firefighters, and EMTs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle, cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying assuring them of your loving presence. We especially today give thanks for those who have overcome this virus. We pray for those who stand in harm's way or who are sick and suffering, especially Ed, Judy, Patty, Mark, Hines, Claude, Marty, Carl, Dorothy, Joseph, James, Connor, Melissa, Mary, John and Greg. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day musicians, ushers, greeters, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died, especially today we remember Floyd. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. And even though you can't shake my hand or hug me as you might, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. 
this morning. This morning we also want to take time to thank God for the many gifts that have, with which we have been blessed and how we return them as well. While we don't have a formal offering, we know that many of you have continued to help support the ministry of this congregation through this time. And as we would normally do here together, uh, let's bow our heads and, and pray for the many gifts which God shares with us. Father of all, you love the world so much that you gave your only son. And you pour out your spirit in a continuing activity of grace. May we be so caught up in the richness of your grace that our own giving is renewed and our own selves refreshed by the living water of Jesus, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.